Hey folks, today I'm going to give you all the details on this blue downlight mod. It's probably one of the mods I've gotten the most questions on, period, I think, on my Pinnacle. And especially after I did a video a few weeks back on, I think it was 38 upgrades of mods that I featured here on the Pinnacle. And got a lot of questions on it again. So I figured I might as well do a video kind of detailing what I learned. And you can learn from my mistakes on it at least. But I'll just start out by showing the finished product and kind of talk a little bit about why I did this particular mod. And the way I did it is I wired it into the BM Pro system under this awning one and step channel. So initially the Pinnacle came with this step light down here. And then up top, this awning number one, both wired together in the same channel. And you know, for me, a lot of times at night, after we go to sleep, I like to have some lighting at my campsite, you know, for security or just if uh, critters around, just to know what's going on. But you don't want to blind your neighbors and have that awning light, you know, shining down the entire night. So this is something I've done on the last couple rigs that I've owned, just had some kind of down lighting that's, you know, not too offensive, but yet puts a little bit of light down at your campsite. And so for me, that's why I changed it so that now on the BM Pro system, awning one and step is both the step light and the down lighting. So you can see as I toggle that on and off, it toggles the step light here and the new down lighting added. And then as far as the awning one that used to be there, I just went ahead and combined it to awning two. Cause for me personally, most of the time, if I'm gonna have my awning lights on, I'll put both of them on at the same time. So that was my compromise. So then when I hit awning two, then up top I've got my first awning light that comes on and then my second awning that comes on there. So that's under this awning two. And then again, awning one and step is the blue downlighting. And another cool feature or benefit of using the BM Pro system to control the downlights is that you can dim them. As you know, most of the lights are dimmable on the BM Pro system. In fact, on mine, it's all of them except for the rear accent inside. So that's kind of a neat feature because then at nighttime, again, if I don't want those blue lights on full on, I can kind of dim them down a little bit and they get pretty dim. I mean, right now you're not really seeing much since it's daylight, but I'll try to put some video up later at night to demonstrate just how dim you can go and what that looks like on the dimmest setting. But it's kind of neat that you can do all that still through the app. Now, I really would love to be able to change the names on these channels, but as far as I know, BM Pro doesn't let you do that. I think that's something they have to program. However, if you're watching this and you know a way to change the names of these channels, then definitely drop a comment below. Now I'll give you some close-up views of what it looks like underneath. And you can see I just ran the full length of the drop section of the I-beam, which is for me right about where the door starts, my entry door, and then all the way up there to the front. And of course did it on both sides. And then if I get a little bit closer to the strip, you can see these are about, the individual LED lights are about three-fourths an inch apart between each one of these, the little diodes. And then they're pretty bright. I mean, you certainly can get brighter lights, but there is a limitation with the BM Pro system that you can only have so many watts or so many amps per channel, and then you get an error message. And that's one mistake I made. I had initially bought a different strip of LED lights, and then before I actually wired everything, and I kind of just dry fitted everything and tested it, and I noticed as soon as I put both sides on the channel, this side, and the other side, then I'd get an error message on the BM Pro system and it would cut the power. And it, I think it was a pretty generic error message if I remember right. I don't think it said, you know, you're over the wattage or over the amperage or anything like that. I think it was, you know, pretty generic and just said, hey, you need to service your, uh, your node there. And so what I realized is it was detecting that it was drawing too much on the amperage, too many watts. And so I had to go with a slightly different LED strip that wasn't quite as bright or at least didn't consume as many watts on it. And so I'll put a link to that particular strip in the description below, but that was definitely one mistake that I did not know that there is a limitation. And still with this strip, even though it's not as bright as the original I had, it is plenty bright. I mean, you know, certainly could get a brighter strip, but really this one serves the needs just fine. All right, well, let me give you all the details and kind of share what I learned in the process of doing this mod. So first thing I did is investigate this blue step light down here. And like I said before, this blue step light from the factory from Jayco is wired into awning number one up there. They're both on the same channel. So if you hop under the coach right here, we're right you know, under the entry door essentially. If you hop under, then you can see we're on the back side here of that blue LED step light. And so here's our skirt board right here. And there's our blue LED step light. So from the factory, 
everything that I'm holding in my fist essentially is what I added with this mod. So if you go and look at yours before the mod, you're gonna see basically everything that's visible that I'm not hiding right here. So you've got your lead coming off of that blue step light, what's feeding it the power and the ground or the negative there. And then up here, you've got these three wires and that's it. So that's all that was here originally. And you can see you've got two, two wires that have, it's kind of like an orange wire with a white stripe and they're both the same. And then you've got a plain white wire with nothing on it. So typically your plain white wires are gonna be your negative or your ground, you know, 12 volts, just positive and negative, basically red and black. So this is gonna be typically your ground. And then these two are the same. So one of these wires is 12 volt positive coming from the BM Pro node. So in other words, when you switch the BM Pro node on and off, it's sending 12 volt power through one of these wires. The other one that's the same color here, this one then runs to awning number one. And so that's it. You got your 12 volt positive, your awning number one, and then your negative or your ground right here. And so originally there was just a kind of like a butt splice right here. They did not use the, the WAGO connectors that they use everywhere else. And that is because, as you can see on this skirt board, you know, we were camping a few weeks back and we're driving in the rain. So it splashed up a lot of stuff from the road here in the skirt board. So water can get up in here. So whatever you do, you want to make sure it's waterproof. So they had a butt splice and then it kind of was wrapped in a waterproof connector and so basically the 12 volt basically these two that are orange with the stripes were together along with coming out of here I think it was red and black if I remember right coming from the step light so the red obviously would go to here and then your ground your plain one would go to if this one had a black or white I can't remember basically whatever they do just make an observation of the colors and everything and uh, you know keep it consistent there so all I had to do then was to isolate you know kind of undo that butt splice connector they they had and figure out which of these two wires here with the orange and the white stripe which is 12 volt positive and then which one runs to the awning so basically if you take one of them out and the blue light is still on and the awning one is off then you know you've identified you know which one is your 12 volt positive but you could also of course take a voltmeter and put it to it and figure it out that way all right so that was my first step i had to figure out which wire does what and then once i did that i basically just isolated the awning light the awning number one i took that away from that connection there and i'll talk about what i did with that in the future but then all i did is take that 12 volt positive wire that that's coming from the BM Pro node already and feeding the step light and then the ground as well from the chassis and then use that to extend and connect on down you can see through this loom here that I've added to, to keep it you know protected and waterproof so then I just added another wire running all the way down to here and then that's where I made my my second splice right there so that's really kind of the first step and then as far as what kind of wire to use I'll put a link in the description below to one that I've come to really appreciate that's kind of my favorite go-to wire and it's a I believe it's a 16 gauge you know 12 volt style wire but what I like about it is it's double insulated it has the regular insulation like right here but then it has an outer jacket that keeps the two wires protected almost like Romex in your house you know in your 120 volt wires in your house where it's got that outer white sheathing so I'll put a link in the description below but basically I just took my step light here my 12 volt and then added a new wire that feeds down to the blue LED strip here. And I prefer to solder my connection, especially you know where you want it to be waterproof out here. So I just soldered them, basically all the, the red together with the orange and the stripe, and then my ground to the other one, which sometimes it'll be white or sometimes it'll be black. And I just soldered that and then took heat shrink, you know, and tube and, and put it over that to make it all waterproof. And then I just like to protect those wires because again, I mean, you're, you know, you can see this is exposed. So maybe road debris or something can get up here and, and wreck have it. So, you know, I want to protect those wires as well. Interestingly, from the factory, they didn't have these protected, um, which by the way, if you're wondering where these wires come, I'll just show you right away. So I'm kind of spinning around toward the back a little bit more of the rig, but you can see they just go up here. This is the top of the frame and they just go right up here. There's a gap between the frame up here and the subfloor. And so I think that's kind of just the thickness of the subfloor perhaps. And there's a little bit of play there. So they just go up in there to the underbelly inside the frame. And, you know, of course, one of them runs to the BM Pro system and the other one runs to the awning number one. 
So that's really the the main connections there. So again, just solder them. You know, if you don't, if you're not comfortable soldering, you could do. There's other waterproof options out there. You know, different splices that you can get um, that are a little bit easier. You know, where you don't need a soldering iron. But that's kind of my preferred method, just to, you know, you know, it's permanent. It's not going to shift or anything. And then I like to get this wire loom here that just kind of protects the the outer jacket of the cable. Uh, just like I said, if any kind of road debris or something would come up in here, and then you just use lots of little tie wraps and keep it together all right so that's your first connection running from here the 12 volt step light and then running all the way down here to your blue led then i did this blue led strip on both sides and so i also ran a second wire and this again same 16 gauge wire through this wire loom that then goes up here across where this little sewer storage that i added kind of runs all the way across to the other side to the other blue LED strip there as well. So I kind of use this as my main junction and supply for the 12 volt power for both sides. And that way it's all kind of neatly tucked up in here, right? So that was the, the first step, all right? So once I did that, then I got to go back and pick up and send power to the awning number one, right? Because I've cut awning number one from this whole bundle right here, and so awning one has no power. So if I want awning one to work, I've got to feed it 12, uh, 12 volt power. So then I went to the uh, to get that same wire, that 16 gauge wire, and ran a single strand here from awning number one. And you can see it goes into the wire loom up here and comes down, and it kind of follows the same path of the wire that runs to the other blue LED, except it goes back here inside. You know, I wanted to go inside the I-beam, and let me grab my light so you can see a little bit better. All right, there we go. So you can see that wire loom, that black wire loom, and these are all your hydraulic lines, at least on my floor plan, that are coming out of there after I've sealed them up with that zip tape. But you can see that wire loom then, and it just chases all the way around the corner and then goes into the where the sewer actually goes into the uh, drop section of the frame there into the underbelly and so i did that because number one there's solid metal behind this bulkhead kind of where the the uh, frame drops down there for the storage and so you don't want to be drilling through metal unless you have to so it was real easy just to kind of slip that single you know strand of wire right through where that expanding foam is right where the sewer goes and that's actually the uh let's see that's going to be the gray tank actually yeah it's got a smaller one so i just kind of went right through there and it made it real easy then to grab from the inside and then take that wire over to the BM Pro system and join it to the awning number two channel. All right, so hopefully you're still tracking with me. Basically right now we just got to get 12 volt power to awning number one, you know, have awning number one synced up to awning number two so they both come on at the same time. And so to do that, we're gonna take and run that wire all the way to the BM Pro node, which in my floor plan, the 37 MDQS, it's right here in the basement storage. And it's pretty easy to get to right behind this access panel. It just kind of slides open there. So you can see there's your BM Pro node. And for those who don't know, it's just like a giant switch basically that's you know supplying 12 volt power to the different channels as you call for it. So everything from lights to your water pump to slides, this is basically just switching and sending 12 volt power you know, to those individual channels. All right, so if we look back here though, and we go all the way back to down here, you can see that expanding foam down there. That's where the gray tank uh, sewer drain comes out, that PVC pipe that we were looking at on the other side of this bulkhead. That's where it, it comes out. And then you can see there's a white wire that traces right through that expanding foam right here. And that is that same white wire that I fed there from the awning number one. So that runs all the way out here. And then you can pick it up again down here. All right, and then that's going to run all the way over to here where you can see I've got a, another WAGO connector right here. So basically this orange one that you're seeing is awning number two. And so I'm joining now awning number one, which is this red wire, to this orange, which is awning number two, and then doing a short kind of a leader that runs to the actual channel on the BM Pro system. So I think if I get close enough, hopefully you can read that where it says awning number two. And so I just added that little leader. I basically took the orange wire that was right here, which was in the BM Pro channel up here, pulled it out, 
added the little leader in here and then joined the orange and the red down here coming from awning number one together using those wago connectors i really like these wago connectors a lot by the way jaco this is the first fifth wheel that I've ever had that uses them throughout consistently. I mean, everywhere I've worked, I find these WAGO connectors as opposed to those kind of crimp splices that all the other brands seem to use. And I really like these. I think they're a little more foolproof. They're definitely easier for, you know, doing mods and stuff. And uh, they're a little more dummy proof. So, I mean, you can't really mess these up. Whereas the crimp splices, you know, if you don't crimp it hard enough or you don't crimp it the right way, they can kind of wiggle themselves loose. So really like that. But that's basically all it is, is just making that channel connected there for awning number two so that it feeds both of them. And so with that connection made now, when we hit the awning number two button there, you can see it turns on awning number one and awning number two here. All right, and so that connection then is made. And then of course we have our step, our separate awning one and step light there. Now just a pro tip here, I would recommend dry fitting everything before you actually solder, you know, or make any of your wiring permanent to test. In fact, that's how I figured out initially that I was pulling too many uh, amps, too many watts on my blue LED strip because I had everything dry fitted. And then I was on the app, you know, testing it. And what would happen is it would turn on the channel for a couple seconds and then it would turn it off and I'd see an error message in the app on that channel, you know, something about service being pro note or something along those lines and, you know, eventually figured out, okay, it's pulling too much amperage on that channel. So definitely dry fit everything before you make it permanent. And that way, if you make a mistake, you're not having to undo all of your work. All right, let's talk about some other considerations. So we're back under here with our skirting in the back side of our blue step LED light there. And so again, this is where the 12 volt from the BM Pro system feeds into the step light and then our newly added two wires running to both sides of the blue down lights there so you can see one going inside this wire loom right here and then it kind of comes out right here to the first led strip and then it continues on to go to the other side there to feed the other blue LED strip. But basically the LED strip itself is just going to have a uh, two wires. Again, usually they're black and they're red. So then, you know, red is typically your positive, your 12 volt and black is typically your ground. But again, just dry fit everything first to make sure that you got it. And what I did here is, of course, I covered everything in the wire loom and then you can see some heat shrink there too to protect everything because these wires are very small gauge, very low gauge, very thin, super easy to damage. So I wanted to protect these because they are kind of exposed, you know, right here. I mean, you've got a jack right next to them, but they're still kind of exposed to the road and everything. And so I went ahead to go protect those, but then I also came back and this is something that I've learned more recently to use is uh, liquid electrical tape that you can kind of almost like paint on to the wire and almost build up a thicker insulation for it and so that's what you're seeing all this black that's just kind of molded around the wires and I'll try to get you as close of a view as I can but basically that just protects us I mean I came back here with oh maybe two or three coats over time and just kind of built it up to thicken this connection up to make it you know more durable uh, and resilient so that if something did come in here it would be a little bit more protected and then that basically those two thin wires the the black and the red that are feeding into the LED strip that's what's feeding it and of course giving it power there and then it's the same story over here on the driver's side so now we're on the outside of the I-beam you can see my sewer connection out here and this black loom right here is where the other side is fed here on the blue down lighting. So basically this loom, you can see it goes up there and runs to this sewer storage I had, and I basically use that kind of as a path to route the wires and then it hooks up of course to the other side over there. But it's the same story over here. You know, I just used some of that liquid electrical tape and some shrink tubing to protect these wires here, beef them up a little bit and make sure that they were protected. And of course you can use tie wraps, zip ties, you know, all over to, to keep everything secure so it doesn't go anywhere. Now let's talk about actually mounting the LED strips. So they come in a 16.4 foot long length, each one. So I had to buy two of them, of course. And then I just cut it to length and I'll show you what that looks like. They have little cut points where you can safely cut the LED strip. But I think my length ended up being closer to maybe 13 feet or so. And you can see down here, I started it right where the I-beam starts down below. 
and then I ran all the way to the front basically right up to that jack more or less and so I think again that ended up being closer to 13 to 14 feet for me so uh, double check depending on the floor plan you have you might have a greater distance on that I-beam or maybe it's shorter you know because really I'm just using the I-beam as my reference point for where to start and then where to, to terminate it there but let's take a look here underneath and I'll show you kind of how they mount up under here so these strips come with an adhesive backer you know I don't know if it's 3m or just a generic but just a peel and stick backer on it so first thing I did is you know of course dry fit everything test it make sure everything's working and then I actually went through and you know soldered everything and made it permanent and then the very next thing I did before I actually mounted this is you want to uh, you want to wipe all this down this is you know exposed to the road and so right now I can feel it's just really grimy from different things getting spattered up on that bottom side of the I-beam so you want to wipe that down so I just used some alcohol and wiped it down real good to make sure it's nice and clean so that that adhesive on the LED strip has something to bond to you know permanent because the last thing you want to have happen is for your strip to be you know flying in the in the wind down the highway and it's coming off and people are honking at you because you got something you know dragging behind so definitely wipe down the underside of the I-beam and then you know I just kind of carefully peeled off about oh maybe 12 to 16 inches at a time and just kind of you know pushed it and made sure that that it's a you know pressure sensitive type adhesive made sure that it's firmly adhered to the underside side of the i-beam and i just went on the kind of more the outside you can see of the i-beam you can see how thick the i-beam is down here at the bottom and i kind of favored this more toward the outside and the reason i did that is if you go further down here you can see you've got a quick connect down there and so that's kind of toward the inside so if you you know favor the inside you're going to run into that quick connect whereas if you go on the outside you pretty much have a straight path all the way front to back there and then as far as cutting the led strip to length you know most of these strips are kind of all the same if you look at them real close they have these little lines designated periodically and some of them have like a scissor icon on them this one looks like it's just kind of plain there but basically a lot of times you'll see almost like little circles on either side of the line right there and they're almost like where the circuit board you know connects one I don't know what you call them kind of module to another module but that's where you can safely cut along one of those lines I mean if you cut it right in the middle here or even between a diode just randomly it could break the entire LED strip so you got to cut it on one of those designated points so all that to say you can say I ran mine pretty much all the way to the front of the I-beam here this is my my propane hose uh, running to the uh, the generator there and so that's where I cut it then and then a couple other precautions that I took I don't know if you can see in the video but I mean it is really grimy under here I can just feel all the road debris little particles of dust and dirt that have gotten up here on the I-beam since I installed it and so my thinking was last thing I want to have happen is for that adhesive to fall to fail you know on the underside of the strip and you've got something hanging so a couple other precautions I did is I came periodically and you can see where these kind of blacked out sections are I kind of went right between two of the diodes to the, the little LED lights and I actually use this same zip tape that you're seeing over here that's sealing up my underbelly to the the I-beam so I just kind of came and cut some thin strips of that zip tape that were thin enough to fit between the two LED diodes and kind of ran that the full width of my I-beam here and I did that every oh looks like about 16 inches down the full length of the LED strip and that way there's something else that's holding it there you know this zip tape is really sticky and tacky I mean it's it sticks to just about anything so I figure well that'll kind of give me a little extra insurance but then the other big thing I did is after I got everything all you know mounted and, and installed and everything was working I came back with some silicone uh, again while everything was still nice and clean and I put a bead of silicone on either side of the LED strip so on the inside and the outside and kind of went right in that groove my goal was to capture and kind of seal up the edges of the LED strip so that you know the adhesive over time can't kind of work itself free because a lot of times that's what happens you'll see the adhesive kind of get uh, dusty and dirty on the edges and kind of start to work itself free and then pretty soon it gets further and further in there till the whole you know adhesive is covered in dust and then it fails so my thinking was putting that silicone on either side of the strip 
you, you can't even really see it. I mean, it's just a, a clear bead of silicone. You know, that kind of gives me another layer of protection to ensure that this strip is as permanent as I want it to be at least. You know, and this is something that if this ever failed and I had to replace it, it's not, you know, so permanent that I can't peel it off. You know, that silicone is going to come undone pretty easy, you know, if you pull it off. And same thing for the, the zip tape as well. So that just kind of gives me a little more assurance that this strip isn't going anywhere, especially down the road and rain and hitting different things on your trips. And then again, it's the same story over here on the driver's side. I had a few more obstacles that I had to kind of go around with my exhaust for the generator. So I had to kind of tuck it above the exhaust pipe there, but I just favored the outside of the I-beam there as far as the location of where I put that strip. And it kind of worked out the same way there and then came back with the zip tape periodically and then of course the the silicone on both sides and you know so far it's held up really well this is about oh maybe four to five months ago that i did this and you know driven through a lot of different conditions a lot of rain and and it's held up really well well, all right, that's pretty much it on the details for this particular mod. You know, I think the lights ended up being plenty bright. In fact, I'll try to come back this evening when it's dark and do some footage at night so you can get an idea of, of what that looks like. But like I said, I did this about four or five months ago. It works great. You know, a lot of times when I'm at a campsite, I'll leave these on all night long, but at a dimmer setting just to have a little bit of ambient light. I've had no issues whatsoever. They've never turned off randomly by themselves. I mean, they stay on the entire time. So it's worked really flawlessly for me and I'm really pleased with the way this all turned out. All right, so here's what it looks like when it's dark outside. Now the sun set about an hour and a half ago approximately to give you some context. And so it's pretty dark right now. I went ahead and turned on the front cap light as well so you can see how that blends nicely. Now my front cap light is actually blue and the reason is it used to be kind of a warm white but I had some water intrusion right up here where the neon tube starts. This is just basically a plastic tube with an LED strip and it kind of makes it look like an old time neon tube but they didn't seal up the tube on either end and so rain got in here eventually and then I went to turn on my front cap light and it kind of short circuited the LED strip in there. So I was able to reuse the tube and everything but just went ahead and replaced it and opted to go with a blue strip to kind of carry this theme forward. And I really like how it turned out. It just blends really nicely. But check out the down lights and this is on the full brightness. I'll put it on a dimmer setting here in just a little bit, but I'll kind of walk along the passenger side here so you can get an idea of what it looks like in the dark. And I've got no other lights on. The awning lights are both off. You can see that step light there. But everything blends together very nicely. It's all the kind of the same shade and tone of blue. And then kind of walking across the front here, you can see what the driver's side looks like going to get a little bit of a shadow you can see right there because of the exhaust pipe hanging down but it's not too bad and then moving back along the driver's side back to the sewer connection so that gives you an idea of what it looks like on full brightness and again both sides are linked together both the driver's side and passenger side now I'll show you what it looks like if we dim the lights you can see right now we're at hundred percent there and I'll take it down to about 50 percent so we're about halfway on the brightness and in the video, if you see a scanning effect where it looks like the lights are moving, that's just in the video. It has something to do with the shutter speed and the frequency of the LED lights. But that does not appear in real life. So right now, what I'm seeing in person is just solid blue. It does not have that effect going on there. But this is 50%. I'll take a step back so you can kind of see what that looks like. Still gives a really decent amount of light there to light up your campsite, especially if you're approaching your entry door at night or you just want to have some security at night. Let's go ahead and go all the way down to the lowest dim setting, the lowest brightness. All right, so that is all the way down at the most dim setting. You can see in the video, I think the exposure is trying to compensate, so it probably looks a little bit brighter than it does in person, but it still casts a good bit of light here to light up your campsite. I mean, if I was approaching to come on inside my fifth wheel at night, this would be plenty of light for me to see and not trip on anything. And then I'll just show you what it looks like underneath here, where you can see the actual LED strips. So again, we're at the lowest brightness right now. And then if I go ahead and take up to the highest brightness, show you again what that looks like underneath. Nice even blue light all the way across.
And now I'm coming at you from the opposite end. I'm standing at the rear of the fifth wheel, looking toward the front. Now I'll turn on the awning lights to kind of give you an idea of what that looks like when they're both on together. So you can see the awning lights are quite a bit brighter. They really light up your campsite compared to the down lights, which are a lot more subtle down there. And so that's why I really like having those at nighttime for some nice ambient light without you know blinding your neighbors. So we'll turn off those awning lights again to compare the difference. Now, I'll also mention you can do any color really on the down lighting. You know, I just picked blue mainly because of the existing step light that was already blue. And then of course I like the color blue and carry that theme forward here on the front cap. But it's just a personal preference. The strips that I bought down here, they have some other colors that you can choose from. They have a warm white, they have a kind of an amber orange color. So really just your personal preference there. And I'll put affiliate links to Amazon for those specific products that I bought in the description below. So I appreciate y'all using those to support the channel. But that's pretty much it on the downlighting mods. It's definitely one of my favorite mods visually. So I do hope this video is helpful to you. But if you have any other questions or if I left out any details, don't hesitate to ask in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.